Immersion is always one of the best ways to make a player feel more invested in a video game. Be it through world building or the settings and themes of the game, it isn't an uncommon thing. I gotta be completely honest with you all, I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to make a video or not on the game Stray, but as a person with multiple animals growing up, I felt that I was almost required to at this point. Admittedly, I was interested in Stray from the moment that I saw the initial trailer for the game. The setting looked interesting enough to pique my old boy interest. A world with robots and no living people in sight? Why does that sound familiar and yet something that I couldn't exactly pinpoint at the time? However, instead of the star of the show being a certain crazy hot android, you get to put yourself in the paws of a widow baby Mew Mew kitty cat. Like all my other videos, before getting into the gameplay, I figured to briefly go into the story. If you're afraid of potential spoilers, then I highly suggest skipping over this section. It'll be very brief and straight to the point as much as possible, otherwise I'll mark the timestamps as I usually do. So if you're someone who gets upset over mild spoilers, you've been warned. Anyways, in Stray, you play as an orange tabby cap who's separated from its family and thrown into a dystopian cyberpunky area filled with robots and little bug creatures called Zerks. Along the way, the cat is directed to a droid who goes by B12. From there, it's a case of B12 rediscovering their lost memory while the two venture across a dead city in order to find a way back to the surface. The best way to describe the story is one that's more about learning about the world through the journey versus actually getting to the destination. Even though the game is relatively short, taking me around 5 or so hours to complete. There's an apparent sense of bond building between B12 and the cat. I generally don't think I expected much going into the game, but by the end, and I know that this probably sounds incredibly strange considering that the cat doesn't really converse other than meowing, but I found the connection between the two to be as strong as something like Jack and BT's relationship in Titanfall 2. When it comes to the gameplay, Stray isn't exactly revolutionary, but it's still pretty fun. I do have some issues here and there, but it isn't really anything that detracts from the overall experience of the game. The platforming, for example, can be a little more than finicky at times. It's not perfect and it can be a little annoying due to how it works. You're essentially glued to everything. On one hand, the cat can't actually fall to its death or anything, but on the other, it can make getting to certain legends or platforms relatively annoying. On the flip side of things, however, when you are able to figure out what you're supposed to do, there is a relatively satisfying and rewarding sense of accomplishment to be gained from playing the game. When it comes to the other aspects, aspects of the game, there is somewhat of a combat system, though it's a bit mundane. Similar to something like Alan Wake's flashlight mechanic, you do get an ability to flash a UV light to kill the Zerk enemies. These are basically little bugs that look similar to the head crabs from the Half-Life series. Flashing a light at them for a certain length causes them to basically pop and die. It's simple and not really anything too exciting, but it does give you an element of variety as opposed to just running away from them in the chase sequences over and over again. Other than that, you also have certain areas where you need to stealthily find a path through without alerting enemies. Once again, none of this is really anything mind-blowing, but the game has a constant feeling of progression to make it seem like you're actually doing something meaningful. What I personally love about Stray is really the atmosphere. The game has a soothing soundtrack to coincide with areas that feel relatively desolate and bleak. Some of the environments give off vibes of being long-forgotten places lost to time, and others are well-lit and vibrant. A lot of the game is super well detailed detailed and incredibly methodical in design. And then there are the world's inhabitants themselves. This is something that I felt was similar to the robots of Nier Automata, where the robots seemed like they were trying to be human. This is something strengthened by the interactions throughout the game as well. Every so often you might see a comment from B12 about the robots and the recreation of society and all that nature. It's not something that I personally expected because I honestly didn't go into Stray thinking that I was going to be introduced to a crash course on existentialism after messing around doing cat things. I also forgot about that. You can do some of the most cat-like stuff ever in the game, too. Scratching doors and carpets, knocking down random boxes and cans. It's basically one of the most authentic cat simulators that we have in our hands in modern society. When it comes to the design of the areas that you come across, you have your share of places that are overgrown and filled with weeds and foliage reclaimed by nature. Going through them leaves you with an eerie feeling. It's like exploring zones that went untouched for hundreds of years, and you're basically the first being that's gone through 
through them since then. And then you have the areas filled with robots basically going through routines as if nothing changed in the world. There's no humans, obviously, and it leaves you with a sense of mystery towards why exactly that happened. Other elements of the game worth mentioning are the focus on the puzzles. Once again, not entirely revolutionary by any means, but it's still fun to figure things out. You might need to go and knock down some boxes or paintings to find a switch or a code to progress. There's also collectibles and whatnot to provide you details on the world and your android companion's past. Surprisingly, Stray is actually a good example of a game that does collectibles well. It provides insight to the world and how things got to the way that they are when you finally get to see things for yourself. Overall, Stray is easily one of my favorite games of 2022 and maybe even one of my favorite games ever. The atmosphere and world building of the game are nearly flawless and when you combine this with the stunning designs of the areas with a relaxed soundtrack, you have a recipe for one of the best adventure games that I've personally played in a very long time. Certain aspects can be annoying and some people might take issues with the game being too easy, but like I said, it's hard for me to find that as a detraction from the quality of the game. Even if some things are overly simplified, the game's story and setting alone makes Stray worth playing for anyone who enjoys chill puzzle games. I don't say this too often, but I am surprised with the game and feel comfortable enough that I highly recommend it. Stray does more than enough to warrant its price tag with a memorable experience that I personally can say is one of the best stories that I've seen in quite a while. And for a game where you're mostly doing just cat things, that's saying a lot.